Yeah. All right, so we are live. Yay. Okay. okay. So let me see here if you're able to. I'm not sure if there's a way to. Let's look what this is here. Let's chat. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way. Share. Hmm. Interesting. Nope. Okay. I don't think so. Um, we can just talk about them. Let's do that. All right. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do. We introduce what's, what's happening here eventually. Um, okay. So we're kind of getting rolling here, but uh, everyone, I am on the call today with Erica Gray, and she is a co-founder of Toolbox Genomics, which is a company that offers practitioners uh, DNA testing. And so we went ahead and did some for Keegan. And uh, we are going to find out what his genetics say about some of the um, health struggles that he's been experiencing the past couple years on and off as a teenager. So it's gonna be fun. I'm really excited to figure out what's happening. <laughs> Yes. So, um, Kaylin, do me a favor, um, just for our listeners and give us, um, just some high level context, um, for some of his health struggles. Cause then we'll be able to tie it in with the genetics. Yeah. So about three years ago, um, he, uh, stayed home from school for about a month because his stomach was hurting. And over that time we went to about four different doctors and, um, urgent cares or, uh, emergency room situations. And the diagnosis was constipation. So the, uh, prescription for that was to take a ton of Miralax. And I was like, man, there's gotta be something else going on. So, uh, I started running some testing on him. I actually had done that right away, but the stool test takes a little bit of time to come back. So in the meantime, we were trying to figure out, you know, was there something we can do? Cause he was missing so much school and in a lot of pain. And so the stool test came back and did show that he had some things going on. He had C. diff and, and a parasite and some other stuff that made sense that it would correlate. And so we started working on addressing those issues. And, um, Every time we feel like we've made progress in the past couple years, we take three steps forward and then we take like five back. So pretty much every single year that he goes to school in the fall, he gets sick. But it's not just a, uh, you know, hey, I'm going back to school. I'm getting a cold like every other kid that goes back to school. It's I have to miss weeks and weeks of school. I'm nauseous. He he tends he trends towards nausea and constipation. Those are his biggies, okay. and um, sometimes stomach pains. So recently, he's old enough now uh, that he was okay doing a uh, blood test, and so we did a food sensitivity test. That does seem to help, and um, following that has really. I think helped his nausea, but I'm not sure, you know, I think that's one piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that we're addressing all of it because we can't be missing a month of school <laughs> every <laughs> fall semester. So that's kind of what's been going on. It's been a hassle for everybody involved. And, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to see maybe what else uh, might be contributing. Um, and then also when you and I had chatted last, you had mentioned for him emotionally too, he had, it was, um, he had some anxiety and issues are just around life in general, right? Yeah. He is a very high stress kid. He puts a lot of pressure on himself a lot. Um, he's very, very smart. So he gets great grades. Um, but there's a lot of self internalized pressure to um, be a certain way. And um, he does get anxiety. And sometimes when life, I mean, cause life is life and he's so busy mm -hmm. and he does have all that pressure to, you know, uh, get, you know, good grades and do this and do that. And he's busy, 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 busy. And so sometimes when life is overwhelming, he does trend towards um, depressive a little bit as well. And usually that's not too bad, too long. Um, he's able to kind of, you know, get out of it, but he kind of trends towards that dark, moody, yeah, <laughs> sad kind of, you know, I like rainy day kind of. <laughs> <laughs> of me. I'm like, I'm like sunshine. Where did the rain? So 
Okay. So there is some there as well. Perfect. Yeah, I just wanted to tie, be able to tie it in really well for everybody. So um, I'm starting with um, the nutrition optimization. And um, I think we're, unfortunately, we're not able to do a screen share right now. But um, Kaylee, we'll figure something out. Maybe we can just post parts of this. Um, and I can circle it and um, we just give, give your listeners some, some insights. Um, so the, the couple things that stood out right away is gluten sensitivity. So he's a carrier um, for the HLA 2D, 2D6, sorry, HLA DQ 2.5. Um, so he is going to be more sensitive to gluten. So again, you've already pulled him off of it. But as a teenager, it's really, in a, it's a struggle. I mean, you go to a birthday party. We just had this conversation. <laughs> it wasn't actually about gluten. Um, it was about sugar because cane sugar came on his test. Oh, no. And he is trying. He's actually trying really, really hard. But um, he forgets. And that's what he yeah. said. Like, I forgot because he's eating a piece of candy. And I'm like, what are you having in your mouth? <laughs> He's like, I just want to live a normal life. So, I know, I know. So yeah. Um, so the 2.5 is a little bit more of an issue than the eight, um, just because the research has shown that that has a stronger association to being more sensitive to gluten. Mm. Um, so, you know, and my son, he's a carrier for the eight and he'll get the occasional stomach upset. And, and you know, he's learned to start correlating it when he's eats four pieces of pizza, even though I said, yo, this is really not going to work for you. Right. Um, so I, I think it's that reminder um, that he has in a, he has some genes in his immune system um, that are just make they're more alert. And so when they come in contact with gluten, they have a more profound response than someone who doesn't have the gene for it. Mm -hmm. And so it, they're, they might overreact. And so that's what I tell my son is, you know, yes, it, I know it tastes really good, but you know, on the, on the flip side of it, um, your immune system is like, what's going on. This is a lot for us to handle. So, um, making sure that you've got those digestive enzymes and probiotics for him in his pocket, um, which is less than exciting as a teenager or even in his backpack. Um, so if he does have that momentary slip, at least we can help him, his body break it down as much as possible and, and limit the effects of the gluten. Um, the other one is vitamin D3 also came back up as high for him. Um, and so what was interesting is that he has one of the genes that makes it harder for his body to convert cholesterol into D3. So we have cholesterol in our skin and the UV rays hit it and then it get, and then the body converts it through this gene to D3. So his body doesn't do it as well. So it's re so for him to go outside and get sunshine is fabulous, but he may not get that additional D3 benefit from the sunlight because that, that gene doesn't help with the conversion. Wow, that's interesting. So he does spend a lot of time outside, even if right now it's cold where we are. Um, but with marching band, he's out like constantly for hours at a time. Which so is... Great. Yeah. You still need that. Yeah. But <laughs> when people say go outside to get your D3, he's one of those people that he's still going to need supplementation because being outside is, is not going to be enough for his body to make D3 okay. in the summertime. Uh, he also had a couple issues in the um, vitamin D3 transport. So his transporter doesn't move D3 as well to where it needs to go. Um, so what I would suggest is if he's not taking a liposomal version of D3 um, and like a fat emulsified because D3 is a fat soluble supplement, um, make sure you do that. So that way, at least um, it's, it's in this little fat package. And so that should help get it to um, the tissues where it needs to go. That is fascinating. And obviously that would have a lot to do with the immune system too. Immune system. <laughs> Yes, um, our, you know, even that depression, anxiety, because D3 really helps our brains as well. It makes us mm. feel so much better. Um, it helps with mood as well. That's so, so what marker did you say that was? Um, that's for vitamin D3. So it's GC is the name of the gene. Um, and we'll go through and just um, circle a lot of these so people can see them if, they, if you want to share that. 
Um, the next one is choline. So choline is really important um, for cell signaling, transporting fats from the liver and brain function. And we get a lot of our choline from eggs. That's a great source and some other um, meat products, but eggs are the number one. Egg yolks are the number one source for that. And it, I find that taking a phosphatidylcholine supplement can be very helpful for boosting the choline in the brain. So it might help him from an academic perspective because he's already doing really well, but just to give that brain, his brain a little additional support as well. Um, because it's involved in cell signaling, um, it may help with some of the anxiety mm. as well. Um, and then the, the big one that everyone always wants to know is um, MTHFR. <laughs> right, yes, and COMT, right? And COMT, yep, the, the status on that. So he's heterozygous um, for the C677T, um, which is the one that's going to do the conversion from um, the, this the last step of folate into that 5-MTHF version. Um, so his, the enzyme is working at about 50% capacity. So making sure he's got a methyl folate on board is, is important. Um, he also has an issue um, in uh, one of the folate transporters as well. So again, this is another reason why we, I always like to check the genetics because if the transporter isn't working as well, he's not gonna necessarily get the folate from his food where it needs to go. And again, taking the 5-MTHF um, folate supplement will help mm -hmm. with that. He's not, and again, I would not, you know, as long as he's getting 400 to 600 micrograms, that's, that should be a good uh, dosage for him because you don't want to push them. I don't think he needs 800 or a yeah. milligram. It is interesting though. I think he does get tired. And um, so that's another I mean, he's busy, so it's kind of natural, but I think he really drags in the morning. And so um, that'll be interesting to see when we incorporate that, if we notice any difference. Yes. And sometimes even it's the delivery system um, for the folate. So I like to use a liposomal forms, one that you can use sublingually, um, or you can you get sublingual tablets and you can get them where they're 200 micrograms. And so that way you mm -hmm. can just um, up titrate his dosage. Um, the other area is omega threes. So in, in the two SNPs that we look at, um, he's heterozygous for both. So his ability to make that conversion, um, from the original starting material, um, into the actual EPA and DHA isn't as good. So again, another case for fish oil, the fish oil is going to help with his brain function. It's going to help with the anxiety, um, but this, and it can also help with getting the arachidonic acid, which is pro-inflammatory and getting it converted into some EPA as well. So just again, we're, by, we're, we're bypassing that conversion that's happening. So is that another situation where eating fish, he's not going to get the full benefit of it because of that? Um, conversion problem or, um, or he would be able to, he would be able to, because the fish has omega three in it. This is where people like to eat seeds and nuts. Um, and with the hope that it's going to convert into their omega threes, gotcha. or they'll take, um, gamma linoleic acid. Um, it's, but it's not going to make the conversion as well okay. as someone who has a, a functional enzyme. So fish is good because it's like already in the package that it's meant to be. Exactly. Okay. okay. That makes sense. Um, so there's a, uh, the, those were kind of the big ones that really stood out. Um, okay. but I want to jump over to his detox pathway because yeah. that was the one that was, um, How you might want to listen. My husband just came in. Oh, detox pathways. Uh, apparently they're fast. Apparently they're fascinating. <laughs> so let me just get he, so far. He needs um, vitamin D3, um, some methylfolate, some fish oil to, uh, and some, some choline, choline. Yeah. Calcitylcholine. 
Um, all right, so glutathione. So he's got mm -hmm. issues in um, three of the SNPs that we look at, three out of the five, sorry. Oh. And some of them are, are the bigger ones. And so this, these, so glutathione is um, the product, it goes around and kind of mops up our toxins. It's also the one that does the phase two uh, metabolism and conversion to get rid of the toxins. And it is, if it doesn't work well, we're, we end up being much more sensitive to toxins or pesticides. Um, so he's got one in a, also one that uses vitamin C. So we'll, we'll talk about the vitamin C one in a second. Um, and then he has another one that makes him more sensitive to toxins. So, and pesticides. Poor thing. I know. I mean, so, how do you live in this world? I'm sensitive to that stuff today. I mean, that's crazy. That's hard. Well, so a couple ways that you can really help support these pathways are broccoli sprouts, right? Because they're super high in sulforaphane. So you could do some sulforaphane supplements. Or if you can get them to eat broccoli, three-day-old broccoli sprouts. <laughs> Easier said than done. Um, that's another great way to do it. NAC, um, N-acetylcysteine, is a good precursor precursor to glutathione. Um, but if he's getting sick, you know, and you can almost set your, your clock by it, I would, I would have him start taking glutathione. Liposomal. Liposomal a month before school mm -hmm. starts to make sure his levels are really well plenished. And then um, once you get through the cold season, then you could switch him over to NAC. That makes so much sense. We're actually sort of getting through that right now. So this year's been, this year's been another trip. So he pushed through more this year. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, we really, I can't remember what it was that happened. I hate, I hate doing this. He ended up on an antibiotic or something. I think it was, Oh, it's always hard when they diagnose you with strep because you can't go back to school without an antibiotic right system for like 24 hours so i think we did that anyways he did not get better from it and so patrick and i were like we're swearing him off because we've done this twice uh two separate years with him where we did go ahead and do an antibiotic and both times like he got worse yeah. and so we were like we will never again go that direction and so as hard as it was we kind of let him ride it out the rest of the time and we're like we're not medicating this we're just not medicating it and we gotta let his body do its thing and so he's finally getting over the sickness um and kind of cold coffee stuff um on and off for almost a month now Oh, so this kind of transitioning out of that. So I'll, pro I'll have to get some NAC for him. We do yeah. have some liposomal glut glutathione um, that he had been taking for a little while, but. Um, has I, yeah, definitely get that because um, the lungs also sequester a lot of glutathione. And okay. so you want to drive it into the lungs um, because that'll help for the, the cough. That's why a lot of times they will use um, in COPD patients they'll use inhaled N-acetylcysteine okay. to, to get into lungs because it's also acts as an expectorant mm -hmm. as well. So, but we can't do that. So you just use the liposomal glutathione. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. All right. And do that. So he also has um, a deletion is what it's called in this one um, glutathione SNP, GSTM1. And that also um, works with vitamin C. So... Here's what this means is that that entire enzyme's ability to contribute to his body to make glutathione to get rid of toxins isn't there. Wow. So that could be why he seems to be more sensitive to colds. His immune system isn't quite where it needs to be. Yeah. Uh, and it's also a, a point for him just to understand that if he is in a goes outside and the air quality isn't good either, um, or he decides to travel, he just, he's going to need to make sure he takes vitamin C and glutathione with him. Mm. Uh, his, his body's ability to mop up those toxins and get rid of them isn't going to be as good as somebody else's. Mm. Okay. So for the vitamin C, um, I would highly, highly recommend also a liposomal version of that because you can dose it pretty aggressively and you're not going to have the GI side effects okay. with it. 
Um, again, with the liposomal will get you better um, tissue penetration. The adrenals and the eyes are the two places that we really concentrate a lot of vitamin C. And so we want to make sure those adrenal glands are topped up as much as possible. And it will also extend the half-life of vitamin C. Vitamin C has a really short half-life. So as soon as you, know, you take it, it, the body breaks it down and out it goes. Um, but the liposomal will extend that. Oh, okay. That's really interesting. I didn't know that about liposomal vitamin C. Yes. And there's a, a company out there. You can find it on Amazon. Um, and they sell little vitamin C liposomal packets. And I think it's called Li Live On. Um, and they're really good for travel purposes. You just take those packets with you okay. and it coats the back of your throat. So if you feel like you have a sore throat, it's just starting, um, you just start swallowing those packets. Oh, nice. What did you say the name of the company was? Live On. Live On. Yes. And the other part of it is that um, it is a form of, it's a sodium ascorbate. So there's different forms of, of vitamin C, but it's a sodium ascorbate. And sodium ascorbate, you use sodium transporters to get your vitamin C where it needs to go. So it's on like, an, it's another little packaging. Hmm. Yeah. To get it there. And he doesn't have an issue in his uh, vitamin C transporters. He just has an issue that in some cases he is not, he's going to have lower vitamin C levels naturally. And he's going to have lower glutathione levels. Mm. Oh, my gosh. All this makes so much sense when you're thinking about what, what allows you to get sick. Yes. <laughs> that's crazy. Isn't it? Yeah. That's so, that's so good. I'm glad we did this. And then also just um, for the vitamin C, because it coats the throat, a lot of times you'll get pain relief. So mm -hmm. if he's starting strep or he's starting a bad um, mm -hmm. sore throat, it tastes like mayonnaise with a chaser. So I'm just... Oh. <laughs> That's so interesting. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> just, just as a warn, as a warning okay. on that, the kids protest a little bit. You can put it in some water, and you can have them drink it with a straw too. But you can just, yeah. if you need it to coat the throat, it's got to go straight into the mouth. Gotcha. So. Okay. Interesting. Uh, okay. So that was, that was a big one. Um, he's got some issues in inflammation. So like the TNF alphas, um, some of the interleukins, those are, um, he's heterozygous or homozygous for those. And I just highlight that because again, it means he's got a little bit more of a vigilant immune system. So, um, it's more likely to respond to a something that's inflammatory, which again could be food, it could be environmental. Yeah. Um, and so instead of you turning that those inflammatory fires off completely, his might be um, burning a little bit more in the background. So taking something like curcumin could always be is a good one, or even cooking with it, putting turmeric on your food, mm -hmm. um, and and D three is going to definitely help there. Okay. Um. Oxidative stress is uh, another one that he he was high on. Um, so just just being aware of that again, the glutathione is going to come into play. That's going to be helpful. Um, the curcumin and uh, your vitamin C, those will all really help for him. And then um, another one that popped up for him. Sorry, I'm just trying to, there we go. Is he has an issue with his folate transporter. So this is, this is looking like, what the heck is that? What is that? That's you. You want to listen? <laughs> so it's um, further up the chain, so to speak, in the metabolism. Bye. Bye. Um, so this is not, so we talked about the conversion, which is the MTHFR, but now this is actually the, the, the folate, um, trans metabolism that happens further up in the course. So that is just another reason why you want to take that methyl folate. Okay. Okay. So kind of doubling up on that. Like that's important. It's yes, it comes up and then. I just want to hit all the high points for you. Okay. All right. So now I want to jump over to the custom trait one because we did the we did the depression one and then we did the IBS. Yeah. Do you want to explain really quickly to everybody that might be listening or watching um, 
how that, like what we did to do that. So you compiled something unique for this. Yes. Situation. Yes. So we have pre curated panels that uh, people can choose from. But then you can pick and choose um, additional traits and add those on. And so a trait would in um, Tegan's uh, in Tegan's uh, situation was depression and IBS because we didn't need to order the entire panel. We just wanted to look at a couple specific traits. And so we just added those on. And that's a, a feature that we offer um, to our practitioners. And it's just it makes it a lot easier for people to uh, create that custom panel for what they need pretty awesome. I, I, I love it. So the big one that came up for him um, was one of the serotonin receptor genes. Um, so with this, so the binding, his body's ability to bind serotonin to the receptor isn't as good as, as other people's. So this can make you more defend, uh, fearful. It can make you more defensive. Um, it can make you more prone to anxiety. And so this is again, happening at that receptor level. And so this is probably why you see some of the fluctuations because sometimes it, it binds to the receptor and, and life is good. Um, but then other times it's not binding. Yeah. And when you're not getting that binding, then you're not getting the signaling um, that you need. So making sure that we're supporting all of the other pathways. So we've got the folate, we've got the D3, the omega-3s. That's going to help us counteract um, okay. that with the serotonin. Um, again, the probiotics are huge, 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 because we make serotonin in our gut. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of serotonin binding in our gut as well, because um, what we're focusing on with that gene is in the brain. We've got other receptors that bind in the gut. Mm -hmm. So a, a workaround is to make sure he's making enough serotonin in his gut to help support his Yeah, so the, uh, the food sensitivities was probably a good step then too. Absolutely. Because when you have a food sensitivity and your gut is inflamed, you're not going to be able to make your neurotransmitters. They're not going to get, um, you're not going to bind and then you're not going to get the effects that you want. So... Um, another thing that you could consider at a low dose and just see is um, uh, S adenosyl methionine, SAM E. That can sometimes be helpful. And it would just be something that you might want to consider um, in the wintertime when, okay. when his anxiety really gets a lot mm -hmm. higher. Mm -hmm. So those were kind of the high level things that I saw. Um, oh, whoops, hold on. Got IBS. Oh, no. oh right. Up down there. Okay. So IBS came up as a um, medium for him, but there were several different genes that um, did come up as being, what we call homozygous for the risk. Um, so definitely there seems to be a genetic component playing into the IBS. Um, so there, that's, <laughs> that would explain why you've been having the nausea, why it's been really exacerbated. Mm -hmm. Um, so again, serotonin is going to be important for that gut motility and making sure that everything is moving, um, el eliminating anything that is going to inflame the gut also. Um, and then you may have to go really heavy on the probiotics for okay. a month or so to help get that gut diversity um, and to help not only get the diversity, but also get the colony for the colonies at a higher level. Mm -hmm. And um, also, you know, antibiotics, you have to do what you have to do, but they do go through and really decimate right. the gut, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, that actually makes sense, too. Genetically, his um, his grandfather had, was it Crohn's? Crohn's. Crohn's. Yeah. So we knew, we were wondering if something was in there. Yes. So he, yeah, he definitely had, a, had several genes in that. And yeah. again, it's not, this is not a bad thing. It's you just, you have to be, you got to be aware of it and just know that if you are decide to completely, you know, if he doesn't follow anything that you say for a day, it's probably going to be okay. <laughs> I'm thinking college, um, but he's going to need to get back onto the protocol faster um, because he just doesn't have that flexibility in his gut as much as, as somebody else. And that's okay because there's other people who are not going to have flexibility in their immune system. They're not going to have flexibility in their um, brain chemistry. 
places like that. Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> That's a very good way to explain it, I think. Yes, and, and it also is a good reminder um, if you're on the fence about, well, you know, I, my brain says I could definitely eat this. You know, there, there's nothing wrong with me. I've been doing really well for the last three weeks. Clearly, um, you know, it's time to, <laughs> I can indulge. And so this is why, you know, I just always leverage the genetics is that this is, this is like that antidote to your brain saying, oh, go ahead. It's fine. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, if, if it's hard for your body, it's hard for your body. It's just, and everybody's different. Exactly. And it, and you know, and it's not something that, um, to feel ashamed of or be, um, be frustrated by because he's got all these tools right. that can really help. Yeah. And it, it, honestly, it's not overwhelming in terms of incorporating. It's not a lot no. to, to do, which is great. So questions, what else, what else can I Ooh. Um, all right. Let me just make sure I understand really quickly. So in the nutrition optimization, um, gluten sensitivity is a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure that we're doing enzymes and probiotics to support his gut. Vitamin D3 is a problem. So we want to make sure we're incorporating that as well to help his immune system. It's lysosomal version. Mm -hmm. Some the title choline. MTHFR, he's heterozygous, so that's working at about 50% capacity, which poses some detoxification and B vitamin problems. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to make sure we're supporting that pathway with some methylfolate, low dose, liposomal if possible, or sublingual, and some fish oil. And uh, for his omega-3s, or eat fish, which we do like. Um, Detoxification is slow for him. It's difficult mm -hmm. for him. So exposure to different toxins, it's hard for his body to flush it out, to handle mm -hmm. flush it. So we want to make sure that we're boosting his glutathione, um, NAC, vitamin C, that sort of thing, especially during the winter season or prepping up to school. And then uh, some low serotonin and IBS um, genetic markers. So s more supporting the gut, making sure we're doing good on diet and probiotics and things like that. Yes, you got it. Super um, fast summary. What was that? Super, super fast summary. <laughs> yeah, that's great. We have some inflammation and oxidative stress and that kind of falls within the immune system and everything else that we would be covering. Yes. So, so a couple more things I wanted to mention. Um, you mentioned COMT. So I wanted to yeah. circle back to that one. So COMT is the enzyme that helps us break down dopamine um, specifically in our, in our brain. So he's um, heterozygous. He's what we would call an average metabolizer. Yeah. So he can go kind of one or he can go both ways, depending on how much dopamine is in his, in his brain at one point. Um, if he is trending a little bit more on the slow end, it means that um, he's got more dopamine buildup in his brain. So if he's more stressed, um, he, it tends to exacerbate it. You don't break down that dopamine as quickly, keeps hitting the receptor and you, the anxiety and the stress level, the perceived stress level can go up. Mm. So, um, but then he could also flip and he might want a little bit more of a dopamine rush. And so it could be food that is eat, eaten. Certain foods are definitely dopamine eliciting. Um, cheese is a big one, if I remember correctly, for um, promoting dopamine. I don't want that ever. <laughs> ever. Um, or even, um, you know, like certain music can create a dopamine rush. Um, getting on your bike and riding crazy fast. I mean, just there's different behaviors. Um, I think those of us who are average, I'm, I'm average, so I'm, I'm biased on this one. <laughs> um, it's nice. We can kind of ping pong back and forth, but there are uh, certain things that might, um, especially things that are habitual that we might enjoy doing more because we, we, we start expecting it. We expect that dopamine rush, you know, it's like the coffee in the morning. Um, there's other aspects of it too, but that, that plays into it. Um, so just be aware of you know, what was that? Video games. Video games. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's not a, a rapid metabolizer. So if he was a rapid metabolizer, you, he, he, those are the ones that, you know, they're on Fortnite for hours on end and they have to unplug the Wi-Fi to get them 
I mean, there's other things that come into play because video games, they've created them to be naturally addictive and keep the dopamine yeah. rush. But <laughs> but it's all it's all interconnected. It's a- all interconnected. So um, just being aware of it, sure. again, is helpful. Um, I did want to just mention that he was kind of a medium risk um, for vitamin A, B12, um, B6, and zinc. And I just, I highlight those only because they come into play with the immune system. Yeah. So making sure um, a lot of the sublingual folates will have a B12 tied into it. So then that covers it. It'll give them a little bit more energy, a little bit more mental clarity. Um, and then also um, the zinc and the vitamin A, you could add those in in the winter time mm-hmm. for some additional immune support. Um, here you want to actually use um, actual vitamin A, like a retinal palmonate, because what we're looking at is the gene's ability to take beta carotene and convert it into the active form of vitamin A into the retinal form. So that's compromised. So beta carotene doesn't do the trick here. It needs to be an actual vitamin A. Hmm. Interesting. And vitamin A and vitamin K are all very helpful synergistically with vitamin D. They work together. Okay. Isn't that magical how it all works together? <laughs> yes. Um, of note, he's also a slow caffeine metabolizer, so I'm sure you're not letting him drink coffee right now. <laughs> well, uh, so that's interesting. So that would mean that it would the half-life would stay in him for a long time. So even if he Correct. drank coffee if he, it, he really would be one of those people that should never, ever have caffeine like afternoon because it yes. would keep him up. Okay. And it is, you know, depending on the body. Um, so there's some interesting, subtle nuances where you may have caffeine later in the day, be a slow caffeine metabolizer. So let's say you have it at three, but now it's like a six to eight hour half-life. You can still go to sleep. You still s- sleep well. But you, if you actually track your sleep, you may not get as much deep sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some of it's a little bit deceptive because people say, but I still sleep great. And I have my coffee at four. It's like, I, I see, I have heard of people having like Mountain Dew, like, like at, around dinner time and things yeah. like that. And I'm like, oh, just personally, like I would not ever, there's no way I would not be able to sleep there. I would be awake if I have, and I don't drink very much coffee. I have, um, you know, four stigmatic. Oh yeah. Like half the caffeine of a normal cup of coffee, you know, and I do that before noon. If I ever push it, you know, 12, 31 o'clock. Mm-mm, nope. You can, I yeah. can, cause I'll be like wide awake at night and I'll be able to fall asleep. But it's not the same uh, timing getting to sleep. And I'm much more alert later. Yes. So I think I'm definitely a slow metabolizer with caffeine. I think my mom is too. She was the one that kind of woke me up to that before I even knew anything about health and and what I do now. She was like, oh, yeah, I can't drink coffee after, you know, a certain point in the day or else I'll stay up. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I started thinking about it. So it's really interesting how those things kind of come into your life at different points. Yes. And so, you know, if you really want that afternoon cup of coffee, have, have decaf. Yeah. Or, exactly. or, you'll, or, yeah. or, or just no. <laughs> but you're not <laughs> <working>, y'all. <laughs> it might work if you're, if you're having a cup at one o'clock because you're having a girl's night, you need to be awake until 1130, <laughs> right? <laughs> strategic. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's part of it is, is just being strategic. And, and, you know, and again, when you have, when you understand the DNA, then you get a more insight into your body and yeah. you can just make better choices. Yeah. That's really, really cool. That is so fascinating. So I hope that was helpful for him. Very, yes. I think it answered a lot of questions for sure. Good. Yeah. And Good. I think we'll be able to be way more um, pinpointed in supporting him when he goes to school next year and even kind of maybe helping him rebound when he gets, he's going on a trip. He's actually leaving right now. Um, when he gets back this weekend, helping him rebound from that for sure. Yes. So. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And what's great is that you, again, as I said, those liposomal packets, you just send them with them. On oh, the trip. Okay. We're literally leaving on a trip right now. Love you, Love you too. Bye. Bye. Have a good trip. Have fun. Maybe see you Saturday night. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, I mean, even just like, uh, putting, putting a couple things together, like you were saying for travel or, um, you know, flying or anything, but I mean, 
So what he does with band is, I mean, it's extraordinarily stressful to the body. So they rehearse um, every day after a long day of school, mm-hmm. uh, minus maybe a couple evenings. And then um, Saturday rehearsals are usually uh, hours, like nine to nine. And <laughs> see ya. And then, um, so a lot of times they're really cold. And then they do football games on Friday nights, which are also really cold. You know, sometimes rainy, sometimes they're standing there in the rain. They, um, he's going on a trip right now for Grand Nationals. He was there last night. It's an hour and a half away. He was there last night after school. Well, they left from school and then they made it like a half day there. Came home, went to school today, full day of school. Now they're driving back to Grand Nationals. And I'm spending the night, spending the week. So it's just a lot of like go, go, go. And it's right. a really awesome, beneficial um, program emotionally, you know, and mentally and everything. But physically, I think it's uh, contributed. I don't think it's contributed necessarily to him being sick. I think it has hindered his ability to get well um, mm-hmm. as quickly as he may be able to if he was resting. Yes. And so that's um, no, seeing this on paper is ex- extraordinarily helpful to me to understand why sometimes it takes so long when he's like one of the healthiest kids I know in terms of activity level and food and all these different things. So this makes this definitely makes sense. Yes. And you know, we can't forget about those little adrenals working super hard. <laughs> he's a little guy. Um, and, you know, and another thing that we could do, um, we could do another session is we could just look at his cortisol trait because we didn't put that on there. You know, we could just unlock that and take a look yeah. um, well, as well because yeah, tired. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the fatigue. Um, but the other thing that we just want to always keep in mind is that, you know, that perceived stress is even, you know, stress, the, the body does expect, I and mean, we didn't, we weren't as much as we would love to say that we were designed to, you know, um, spend our days on a beach, just relaxing. (laughs) Um, The the body does expect a certain level of stress and it's incredibly resilient. Um, And that's actually one of the theories behind some of the autoimmune conditions because we, uh, we evolved with parasites. And so the body was always used to dealing with the parasites. It left our own tissues alone. This is a, it's a theory, you know, it's, it's one of them out there. Um, but now that we don't have the parasites and the body's like, oh, tissue, what's up with you? <laughs> You're not supposed to be here. We go after you. <laughs> what's the thyroid? Uh, exactly. So some people have actually rev- reversed autoimmune conditions um, with by getting uh, parasites, like swallowing certain uh, mm-hmm. worms. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to tell you, it's not, it, kind of along the lines of this, really, really fascinating. So when I, you may, you may know this, when I... Um, got diagnosed, I was, you know, doing all the research, of course, listening to all the summits, reading all that, you know, doing everything. Somewhere, so this little piece of information stood out to me. And it was that, um, you know, some uh, integrative medical practitioners or more naturally minded practitioners, they'll use prescription medications, but off label. Mm-hmm. They'll do things that are, you know, designed for, I don't know, diabetes or heart conditions or whatever, but they have found them to be effective in certain cancer situations. And so what I found super fascinating was that one of the prescriptions that they have used was an anti-parasitical. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my word, because over the past several years working on my gut, I had identified multiple parasites and any time I was on a parasite protocol, I felt amazing. Oh, wow. And it was so weird to kind of make that connection. I was like, man, what if I, I, I what, what if that was having an impact that I didn't even know? You know, so it, there's these, and there's so many questions that come out of that, that I'll never have answers to. But I was like, I made that. I was like, man, ever. And I was verbally say that to my husband. I was like, man, every time I go on a parasite protocol, I feel fantastic. I have so much energy. I feel great. I don't know what it is, man. You know, like this is awesome. And uh, then sure enough, later I got diagnosed and find out that sometimes they use anti-parasitic treatments for cancer. I'm like, that's just nuts. So That's I don't know what really the mechanism would be. I don't know how that would be connected, but yeah. I I, it. Yeah, I think it will, it will depend on which antiparasitic they're using, sure. uh, but that it, it's really interesting. 
for sure. The body is amazing. So, that's for sure. It is. And you know, I think that's a, um, just as like a, a point to wrap it up is the body loves um, homeostasis, right? It really likes this narrow window and it, it, it works hard to keep you there. And so if you deviate out, it's going to really try to bring you back. So it, you know, as much as we can help our body stay in that zone, um, the healthier we're going to be. Because well, it plays into maybe some of the deficiencies that he might have too, like with the the vitamin C, because that's one of those backup mechanisms, right? It's going right. to utilize that, and that's how we get to really depleted in things. Is because our body's like following all these checks and balances because it's so cool. Like it just blows my mind, like how many there are. Well, if this doesn't work, then my body's going to do this. And if that's yes. my body's going to do, it's so cool. But then that's how we're like, oh man, we have like no B vitamins left. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and oh, it's like no vitamin C anymore. Like there's a, my gas tank is empty. So that totally makes sense. So this, yeah, totally eye opening. I'm so glad. And this is, you know, of all the tests that I run, this is information that I would not have had. So I can put it together with everything for him and really really make an impact, I think. So that's amazing. So Great. thank you so much for doing My that. My pleasure. Before we hop off, um, talk just really quickly about Toolbox Genomics, where people can find you. It's a practitioner only order, I believe, right? Um, except we have a new opportunity. Oh. So super excited to talk about, about it. <laughs> extend that to your listeners. Um, so yes, as Kaylee mentioned, we are um, for practitioners but we have a set of wellness panels. And so the nutrition optimization that I went through today is one of those. Um, so if you, we are getting an affiliate link put together, um, it's just not quite ready. So if you email me at Erica, E-R-I-K-A, at toolboxgenomics.com, so that's T-O-O-L-B-O-X-G-E-N-O-M-I-C-S.com, you um, and, me today, spelling <laughs> <it>. <laughs> um, and let me know what you're interested in. Um, then we can get you set up and get this ordered for you. And as soon as we get that um, special invite link, I'll definitely send it to you and then we can um, include it at the bottom. Yeah, absolutely. For and for anyone listening on the podcast, we'll make sure I have that link in the show notes um, so that you have all the information you want. But yeah, the nu nutrition optimization would be a great one. Um, you know, just to, for example, when I run food sensitivity testing, it would be fascinating for me to put the two together because. I um, have done multiple tests on myself. And one of the things that I share with my uh, clients is, you know, when you're able to do a few in a year, you really start to understand which fall off that are kind of only getting caught up in the inflammation and the mess of what's mm -hmm. going on. And, and then you really see which ones stick around. And for me, wheat has shown up on every single one I've ever taken. And I haven't had it in my system for seven years. So um, it's mind blowing to me. And so I'm so curious. I feel like if I took that, the, the genetic, yeah. uh, nutrition options, I'm sure, I'm 100% sure I'd probably come, come back super strong on the genetic sensitivity to gluten. Like I, I would not doubt it. And I'd be like, oh, I, <laughs> yep, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. And it's, and again, it, it, it ends up being a lot of times the genetics confirm what you suspected. Yeah. They confirm a family history. Um, they validate the protocols that you're putting people on or that you, or that people feel like they need to be on. Um, and then every now and then you get these wonderful little insights of, whoa, I had no idea. Well, and even too, um, you know, putting them together, just being able to say, okay, hey, this one kind of backing it up and saying, hey, this is maybe a lifelong thing because genetically yes. that's not going to change. So where you may be able to really heal your gut and work on not having a sensitivity to things like avocado or blueberries, um, the gluten thing might really be a long-term issue. Or yes. if you have like the genetics for IBS or Crohn's or whatever it is, then just having the genetic information that this is a tendency, it gives you so much more in your uh, toolbox. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of, being, yes. Of really being able to, to handle life and understand why you feel the way you feel and then how you can feel the best if you do get exposed to something like you said. So yeah, I think that's really, really helpful on like 10 different levels. So yeah, 
Yeah. And, and just a lot of times people say, well, why not just do a blood test? And the blood test is that moment in time versus the genetics is, is the long term. So that's the right. long game Yeah. versus, um, you know, here and now. And so that's a really good way for people to use them in tandem, like you were saying with the food sensitivities. Yeah. That is so great. And this is, I just, I'm so excited. Thank you so much. I'm so glad we did this. I'm so oh, good. I, I, I'm really excited for the first time in a while with Keegan. I just really want to give him some vitamin C. <laughs> <laughs> like here, take some life. all vitamin C. You're going to feel like I know. I know. I know he's going to be like, mom, seriously again? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, no, he's pretty compliant. I think he's at the point where he really wants to feel better. And some of the food stuff's been hard and he's been pretty good on that as well. So, um, um, I think he's, you know, he really wants to do well in band and it's hard to skip school. And so we're, 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 we're at the point where, you know, you give him a handful of supplements at breakfast, he'll do it. So or life is over, right. we end up. Yeah. So yeah, can't wait to try it. And I'll have to keep you posted for sure. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you so much, Erica. You are so welcome. It's my pleasure. I hope it was uh, helpful for everyone as well. Make sure you check out the, the links in the show notes so that we can, uh, you can uh, check out the, the nutritional optimization testing. That's really exciting. And uh, I will talk to you soon, Erica. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Talk to you soon.